16-player trouble brewing game that just started. Um, because it's 16 players, it's 15 normal players plus one traveler. In this case, I made it an evil gunslinger. Um, in part to try to make up for the fact that one of the minions is a baron. Now, the minion being a baron is a little bit of a wild card because it's not an active power they can use. So I try to balance that out with an evil gunslinger. It's also to try to throw the players off metagame a little bit. Usually they assume that if there's a traveler, that traveler is good. So mixing that up every now and again is useful. Um, the evil traveler knows the demon. In addition, the spy is a relatively new player. We spent very little time looking at this, so we'll see what they make of that. It's going to be interesting. Uh, we also have a drunk undertaker, which is going to be interesting to play out because it means that I get to give ongoing false information about dead characters. That is a very powerful tool to make the game sort of more interesting. Um, we have a couple of other things that are interesting setups. We have a Scarlet Woman. In part, this was because there are some new players, and so the Scarlet Woman means that the game won't just end immediately if the imp dies. In this particular game, though, we have an interesting combination of um, a slayer in play that's not drunk, and a recluse, and a demon. Um, so this means that the slayer can actually slay either of these two players. And if they slay either of them, the game will not end. If they slay the recluse, the recluse will just die. Um, but the game is not over because there's still a demon in play. If the demon is killed, then the Scarlet Woman becomes the demon. And so regardless, the slayer ends up either probably thinking that they're drunk, which throws, or not thinking that they're drunk, they're going to make a player die. But the game continues, so people are going to think either that the targeted person was the recluse, or they're going to think that um, that there was a Scarlet Woman in play. So in either case, it's still useful information for good, but not as useful as it would have been if they just won the game. The Baron in play also means that we have four outsiders. So this should be apparent to the players pretty quickly because they're going to get a lot of outsider claims. Um, I know the Baron already claimed outsider. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that actually plays out because currently I think there are four outsider claims and one, so two of them are overlapping. Because a drunk, of course, would never claim drunk, they wouldn't know. Um, we have a mayor in this game too, which is pretty handy for the storyteller because if they get targeted, I can make the mayor live to try to get them to the last day. And if I do, if I do, I can redirect to the Raven Keeper, which is going to help good a lot. Alright, let's join the game. What just happened yesterday was the group decided that they were going to use the gunslinger to kill the saint. So they were going to have everyone, so they nominated the recluse, and then they were going to have everyone vote, and then the gunslinger was just going to kill the saint, because that was, it's not an execution, so it wouldn't lose good the game. But at that point, the saint went, but I'm the only player who votes. I'm aggressive about voting, so you should keep me alive. And so at that point, uh, they chose, the gunslinger chose not to kill the saint, which makes a lot of sense because the gunslinger is also evil, so they don't want the saint to die. They did end up killing the recluse though, and at that point I showed the drunk undertaker that the recluse was the poisoner, um, which can happen even if the undertaker is totally sober, because the recluse can register as an evil character even when they're dead. So hopefully they'll realize that and not start to suspect that they're drunk yet. Um, this is just because it's fun to play with the players. Um, the spy also took a while to look inside the box now. I feel like the spy now has a good idea of who everyone is. I haven't heard them bluff yet though, so we'll see, we'll see what they end up doing with it. Um, I also have not heard the demon claim anything yet. The demon has some really nice bluff set up. So the librarian is going to let the imp claim that someone is drunk. So the librarian, which is currently what the, one of the bluffs that the demon has. If they claim this, they can point to two players and say one of you is drunk, which is pretty convincing. They can also choose to claim Monk and then target a dead player so no one dies to give themselves credit. Or they can of course use Fortune Teller to just say, I got a yes with those two players to try to throw a lot of suspicion that some particular players are the demons. Um, so far, none of that had happened. However, the demon did target the soldier last night, so no one died. Um, 
And so I think this happened because a soldier was claiming a powerful role in private to only some players, which in theory might mean that the soldiers just, just gained a lot of information about who the demon might be. The town decided to execute the butler, and uh, the butler didn't really give much of a defense except saying that um, whoever else we execute is just going to be pretty much random, so I might as well die. If someone else dies, they will probably be more powerful than I am, which is pretty true. In addition, the butler refused to say who they were, which is a good idea in cases an Undertaker in play, like in this game, because that way the Undertaker can sort of confirm themselves as the Undertaker by proving that they know who someone is. And so in this case, I actually did show the drunk Undertaker the true role of the butler, so that the Undertaker believes their own, own information and other people start to believe them. Because that way, later in the game, when I give them misinformation, people believe that they are the butler, as they are the Undertaker, and believe that the Undertaker is not drunk. Um, the Imp also pulled off a really important kill. They killed the Empath, um, who, once the butler is dead, is starting to like tear through the number of players. And so getting rid of the Empath here is pretty, pretty important. We still haven't really seen much from the Slayer or the Raven Keeper. I don't know whether they're doing things in private. The Raven Keeper is sitting next to the Spy, and so they're probably being fed some pretty bad misinformation here. But I haven't seen the Spy talk to the Imp, so the Imp might not know that this player is the Raven Keeper. So hopefully, for evil at least, they're not gonna end up hitting the Raven Keeper anytime soon. Although I think currently evil is doing pretty well. The good players that get information are being sort of killed off one by one. And so I think if the, if the imp ends up targeting the mayor, I'm probably going to bounce it to the Raven Keeper at this point to try to give good a leg up again. The virgin ability is also not triggered yet. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. One thing that would be really cool to see is if the spy nominates the virgin. At that point, I would probably kill the spy um, just because it gives the spy a lot of credibility. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. We'll see. During the day, what happened was this player claimed soldier, the imp claimed monk, and the baron also claimed soldier. They all claimed that they were the reason why no one died one night. So now the town has decided they're going to kill both soldiers. They killed this soldier first, and I showed the drunk undertaker that this soldier was the spy. And now of course they're going to have to figure out, was that actually true or was that not true? Um, this player was playing a little bit sketchily, so they might not trust them. At the same time, if they were the spy, I would probably have shown a, shown a townsfolk instead. So there might be some suspicion that something fishy is going on. In addition, what happened next was that the, um, the imp targeted the Raven Keeper, which is sort of what I hoped would happen. The Raven Keeper then points to the Scarlet Woman and announces it in the following day, I have found the Scarlet Woman. And I just heard now that the Virgin claimed Virgin, so my guess is they're going to use the Virgin to confirm the Raven Keeper. And so that way they have sort of a trio over here. Although the Raven Keeper is already dead, I don't exactly know how they're going to do this, uh, but they're probably going to try to use the, the Virgin to try to confirm some of this information and try to get out some of the evil players. Um, certainly this helps Good come a little bit back into the fold. Yesterday, the town executed the Scarlet Woman. Um, so the Scarlet Woman over here got executed. Um, and they got executed because they nominated the Virgin and then did not die. So at that point, the Scarlet Woman was like, well, that's fine, just kill me. They were, did not claim they were evil. They even voted for themselves. So at this point, I think a bunch of people, including the drunk Virgin, sorry, including the Virgin, um, believes that the Scarlet Woman is good which is why I showed the Drunk Undertaker that the Scarlet Woman was the Drunk. Because at that point, if the Drunk nominates the Virgin, they wouldn't die because they are not Townsfolk. They think they're a Townsfolk, but they're actually an outsider. So that still works out with the information in the game. Um, during the night, the Inn targeted the Mayor and I bounced that to the Baron because there was a bunch of heat on this pair. Now, recall, the Baron claimed Soldier earlier in the game. 
So now people are going to think that either this person was lying or poisoned or drunk. Right? Because there's conflicting claims here and they died at night, crucially. So now the question becomes, what happened here? What a bunch of the players are now saying is that this was the imp who killed themselves. And my hope is that now that's going to throw some of the suspicion away from this pair. And I'm hoping the spy is going to sort of step up their game to almost like take the fall for the imp. Um, that hasn't happened yet, but the, there are now relatively few players left alive. Also notice we still have the Slayer living, so the Slayer can still be a major part of this game because now evil has no backup. The chef, I think, has uh, talked to the Slayer, I believe, and gotten the Slayer to claim the chef's information, basically to keep, keep the Slayer safe so that the chef information still gets out there. Um, the information the chef got was a one, and they only got a one for this pair because the spy registered as a townsfolk. And so that might also throw them off. Specifically, they're probably going to believe that the gunslinger is good if they decide that this is a pair. So this, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players left. Um, so we have two more days. And uh, we'll see how the place out. <laughs>
So in this game, we ended up with the last the last day being only three players: the spy, the imp, and the mayor. Which is generally a pretty good position for evil to be in because they control a lot of the playing field. The spy had claimed washerwoman and given some evidence for why that was the case. Um, the imp, remember though, was bluffing as the monk and claimed to be protecting the slayer. The slayer died in the night though, so at that point everyone was pretty suspicious of the imp. What then happened was the moment day opened, the imp nominated the spy, at which point all the players were like, ah, we need to vote for the spy because we're pretty sure this person's evil. The spy gets two votes. So the spy is now about to be executed. That's a majority of alive players. The mayor speaks up and says, I am the mayor, we need to tie this vote. So the mayor at that point nominates themselves in the hope to tie the vote. The vote count goes around, the spy votes, the scarlet woman votes, and the mayor doesn't realize that both of them have voted and raises their hand for themselves, bringing the vote count for the mayor to three. At that point, the mayor is about to be executed. However, the um, spy got up to only two votes. So the spy is now safe. The mayor is about to be executed. And of course, the spy isn't going to nominate anyone because they know that they win if the mayor gets executed. And so at this point, evil has just won the game because the spy basically just sort of drops their sheet and goes, I'm the spy, I'm not nominating. Evil is one. And victory goes to the evil team. It's a close match.